Thank you. You guys did a nice job coming over to the meeting area. So make sure you're comfortable. You're going to be sitting here a while. <laughs> okay, so the, can they sit in desks? Things keep coming up. If you wanted to allow, like this would be the one place where I would uh, think this would work out fine, would be to use these four desks because they're still really close to you. Um, the last classroom, the place where they were sitting was too far away. So, but this would work if you wanted to do it that way. Okay, we are in a good part of Shi Shiloh. I almost said earthquake there. Of Shiloh. Are you excited? Yeah. You guys are getting close to finishing this book. Do you like it so far? Yeah. It's a good one. Okay, so you have been learning that good readers, when they um, get to the second fourth of the book, you marked your marked your tabs in your book. I see your little sticky notes there. And when you get to the second fourth, the halfway point of the book, you start to think about the author's message or the theme. And I call that a line of thinking. Because it's kind of hard to pay attention to everything when you read. So it's really important to narrow your thinking to one important thing. And the important in this book is going to be what the author wants you to learn. Okay? And that's the theme or the author's message. So you've been thinking about this, and I know it was a little tricky coming up with some ideas for theme. That's okay. It's the first time you've done it. You'll get really good by the end of the year, I promise you. And so your teacher helped you come up with some ideas, and you came up with a brilliant idea. I was so excited when I came in here and saw what you guys were thinking. It's awesome. You've been thinking that Marty has two thoughts going in his head. On the one side, he thinks that protecting animals is right. Is that what you came up with? And you had some ideas about why protecting animals is a good thing. You said that Shiloh is now starting to feel like he's loved and he's being loyal to Marty and Marty is feeling proud that he's able to take care of Shiloh so well. So these are all good things, right? This makes you feel good inside. But you also said that lying and keeping secrets is wrong. Now, it was perfect today that we were talking about the word tense because Marty is feeling tense inside, isn't he? Would you feel tense inside if you knew that you were doing the right thing? No, you'd feel relaxed. So the fact that he's feeling tense tells us that he knows that this isn't exactly the right thing, right? He realizes that lying and keeping secrets is wrong. So you said that Marty is tense. So this must have been when you said you already wrote it in your notebook. There it is. Marty's tense. His chest is tight. He um, is starting to notice that one lie leads to another. He's feeling ashamed and he thinks he's gonna go to hell for the lies that he's told. If you use the word correctly, it's not a swear word. Okay. All right. Um, so he's not feeling so good about this, is he? That sounds really bad. So what we're going to listen for today is, are we going to be able to gather any more evidence to prove that Marty's feeling this way? He's feeling torn between what's right and what's wrong. All right, so I'm going to be thinking about the events in the text and how those events support your thinking about right and wrong. And I'm also going to be thinking about what I know about the genre of realistic fiction, okay? So please notice how I do that when I read. And I'm going to be using our STEM. Uh, okay, over there. Everybody's eyes up. I want to see all eyes on that pink stem. Okay, you got your eyes there? Eyes up. When the book said blank, 
I thought this was an important piece of evidence to show blank because blank. Okay. So we're thinking about evidence to add to our chart. I'm going to model that for you. So listen really carefully when I stop to model so that you know how to do it when it's your turn to turn and talk. On your turn and talk list, do you know who talks first? So if you're green, it looks like you're going to talk first, okay? Greens, raise your hand. Okay, and then oranges, you're responsible for responding. Oranges, raise your hand. You're going to be really good listeners and get ready to respond, okay? But I'm going to do it first. Okay, we are starting. I thought of something I'll try out for you guys to watch. Okay, page 74. Oh, I'm sorry, you're in the scholastic version. Um, 66. Is that right? Yeah, 65. 65. Oh, 65. Sorry. Chapter 8. Does this have my... Oh, it's not marked. Hold on just a second. I've got to make sure I know where I'm stopping. Okay. Next two days go by smooth as buttermilk. He's not feeling tense, is he? He's feeling pretty relaxed. Next two days go by smooth as buttermilk. Shiloh gets biscuits or toast and a couple bites of ham for breakfast. And then in the evening, I fix him up some frankfurters, cut up and mixed with sour cream and little chunks of cheese. He don't much like the cheese. It sticks to his teeth, and he turns his head sideways when he chews, trying to get it off. Licks his chops afterward, though. He throws up the first time he eats the stuff. Too rich for his belly, I guess. But after that, he manages to keep it down. And all the while, he's fattening out a little. Each day, it's harder to see his ribs. I know my secret can't go on forever, though. Only had the dog for six days. And that evening, I find out that Judd Travers wants to hunt on our land, up the hill and over in the far woods. Thinks maybe he could find himself some quail over there, he says. When Dad tells us that piece of news at dinner, my whole body goes cold. I want to jump up and scream, no! But I just grip my chair and wait it out. So when the book said, that Shiloh was getting fed all of this really good food. I thought this was an important piece of evidence to show that protecting animals is right. Because I can see that Shiloh is going to um, get big and strong because he's eating good food. Did you notice that? So that's going to go on our chart where it says protecting animals is right. On page 65, Shiloh was being fed well. I might be diverting a little bit. Would you write that down? That's really important for us to know. That Shiloh is being fed well. That's a good thing. Can you see it? Am I in the way? You have a marked one? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. At the same time, I'm noticing something to show that um, lying and keeping secrets is wrong. So when the book said that Marty's secret couldn't go on forever, 
I thought this was an important piece of evidence to show that eventually Marty's going to have to pay a consequence. So something bad is going to happen because he's telling a secret. Don't you think? So that's going to go on the other side of our chart. And I'm going to have to turn the page to squeeze that in, okay? So I'm just going to, if you've run out of room, just turn the page, draw a line down, and we're going to write Marty's secret. Whoop, Marty's secret can't go on forever. And he said that on page 66. So in that chunk of text, we learned about one reason why it's right to protect animals, but a reason why it's wrong to lie. Did you get that written down, honey?